Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about lasers and Gaussian beams and show you how to model them using Raylab. When most of us think about lasers, we think of them as these collimated beams that stay parallel forever. But that is actually not the case. Most of the time, lasers end up diverging after traveling some distance. So if we start with a laser beam that has a certain diameter and we try to focus it, we'll see that it comes down to a certain diameter and it starts expanding again. It, it never will get down to a single point. Uh, now what this minimum diameter is depends on a number of factors like the wavelength of the beam and how fast you're trying to focus it. There's a lot of information about Gaussian beams on Wikipedia. I don't want to get into the equations here or the details. What I want to do is show you how we can model Gaussian beams using Raylab. So let me switch to my iPad screen. So Raylab is an optical simulation program for the iPad. And uh, if you haven't seen it before, I suggest you watch my introductory video to it. But I'm going to start a model by tapping the plus button in the corner. And it gives us a default sort of canvas with a number of source points and a screen. But I want to change some of those and go ahead down to a single source point and a single fan ray. And I'm going to assume that I'm working with a helium neon laser. So I'm going to set my wavelength to 633 nanometers. And I have to do this for both lambda 1 and lambda n. And to get a Gaussian beam analysis started, all I have to do is tap this switch that turns on Gaussian beam analysis. So you'll see now that my beam has got a certain width. Um, I can go ahead and check the properties of that beam. And the Gaussian beam parameters are listed right here. And I have a beam that has a waste diameter of, or sorry, a waste radius of half a millimeter and the other two parameters we can discuss uh, a little bit later. So let's suppose that what I would like to do is take this beam and focus it down to about 5 micron radius about 200 millimeters away. So first thing I would do is add a lens and I put my screen a little past my target and you can see that you know the beam has focused but on this window it's a little difficult to see exactly at what point the beam starts diverging again so I'm going to show you a second option for looking at Gaussian beams and that is to come down here to the analysis window and turn on the plot for Gaussian spot size and in this screen, it is a lot easier to look at uh, the, how the beam diameter changes as a function of position. And you can see that as I change the position of my lens, that focus point moves back and forth. So you, I could easily put it at about a 200 millimeter target location. But you see that the beam does not focus all the way down to a point. It has started diverging again. And uh, that's you know, one of the properties of Gaussian beams. And from the little table down below, I can see that uh, it's coming down to about 52 microns. So it's about 10 times larger beam size than I would like. So in order to achieve the type of tight focus that I need, what I actually have to do is I have to expand the beam first before trying to focus it. So I'm going to do this by moving this lens uh, back and I'm going to change its properties by tapping on the little lens icon. And let's start by actually making the lens smaller. I'm going to make it a one millimeter diameter lens, sorry, one millimeter radius lens. And I also have to change the radius of the other surface. 
So I have a small lens and I'm going to change the thickness of the lens also to one millimeter. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to uh, make this a concave lens and I would like to set the focal length of it to be about 10 millimeters so that means I want a power of minus 0.1 and I would like the shape factor to be minus 1 that makes the lens uh, plano concave lens. So let's zoom in here and see what I got. So I made this plano concave lens. By the way, I could have just come here and actually moved the lens by touching the surfaces and change the thickness. You can also rotate it using two fingers and so on. Uh, but it's easier to sometimes just type the numbers in. So I'm going to use the undo button to get this back. And uh, let me actually put it at about two millimeters away from my source. So now I basically have a expanding beam and I can now add another lens. Let's bring this lens a little closer. And I can go ahead and change the properties of this guy. Again, tap it to select the surface. And then tap the lens icon. And let's go ahead and make this lens 5 millimeter radius. And also change the size of the second surface as well to 5 millimeters. And I am going to change the thickness of the lens to one millimeter. And uh, so here's my big lens. And I'm now going to set this to a 50 millimeter focal length. So that's a power of 0.02. And I'm going to make it symmetric by setting the shape factor zero. Okay. So now you can see again the Gaussian beam uh, expanding and then focusing down. And as I said, I would like to get the focus to be close to 200 millimeters and you can see from the little table below that I'm now much closer to my target um, focus of 5 micron radius uh, I can probably do better by moving these lenses around a little oh, there we go, so that's about 5 micron but I'm a little shy of my 200 mark target, so let's just play with these positions a bit. Oops. So there we go. So I now have a lens system where the focus is at around, has a waist of around five microns. 200 millimeters away from my source, accomplished by a concave lens to expand the beam and another lens to focus the beam. And again, the main purpose of this tutorial is to just show you how you can see Gaussian beams in Raylab. Um, so to review, there were two options. One was to turn on the Gaussian beam switch, which shows you the Gaussian beam uh, shape in the main window and it also shows the table with all of the Gaussian parameters and the second option was to 
come down to the analysis window and turn on the Gaussian spot size and that gave us this other window which um, you know zooms in the y and x-axis independently and lets you um, uh, look more closely at your uh, Gaussian beam profile and uh, one last comment when we are looking at this window here you see the uh, lines these lines are the actual wavefronts so they show the curvature of the wavefront and the spacing between the lines is multiple of the Rayleigh length so if I'm looking at it close to the focus these lines are each one Rayleigh range uh, apart and further away they are um, 10 Rayleigh ranges apart and th that kind of gives you a sense of how your Rayleigh range is uh, changing as you go through the various lenses. One last thing I wanted to mention is the M squared parameter. So if I go back to my source here and, and tap on the lens icon, we had these uh, three different parameters for the Gaussian beam. The M squared is the beam quality factor. And for an ideal laser, that's one. But uh, for non-ideal or real lasers, uh, the value can be larger than one. Now, for a helium neon, it's probably values are between one and 1.1. For something like a high power laser, um, multi-mode laser, this value can be maybe as high as 20 or 30. So if I go to say 30, you can see that you know when your m squared parameter is much larger that your beam does not focus as tightly and you can actually see you know how the m squared parameter changes the waist i hope this video has been helpful and i hope you enjoy uh, learning about optics using raylab